Thanks for joining us for uh, today's subject, which is the prospect module. The prospect module itself in Donman is an optional module, so it doesn't sort of come as part of the standard package. And what it allows you to do is to uh, import names and addresses and contact details, etc., for people that you might want to mail to or uh, email or correspond with in some manner, but you don't actually want them to go into your donor file until they've made a transaction. Okay. So when we first have a look at the actual donor screen, uh, you'll see it's it's very limited as opposed to the donor. I mean, the prospect screen is vastly different from the donor screen. A lot of the fields are similar. You have prospect number rather than donor number, and the prospect number is independent from donors. So when you have donors and you move them to archive, because there's additional information stored against the record like notes and donations and, and maybe pledges and bequests and all of that sort of information, um, the number stays with that record. So if we return them from archive back to donors, that number is maintained. In prospects, the number is independent, so it's like its own little data file, uh, has no correspondence or in correlation to the donor number in any way, shape or form. So if we go back and have a look, at Donman. So in order to find the prospect module, it probably won't be on your, your main screen here. So if we go through the main screen and you'll get to fundraising and then you'll see, so you'll have your organization name where it's on, on mine it's got Donman version seven, then you'll have fundraising and then down the bottom here you'll have prospects. So on there, as you can see, just like uh, unlike donors, there's not very much on the menu. Okay. So the create new edit existing prospect record. So this allows us to have a look at the screen. Okay. So the prospect number, if I enter, you can see is a very low number in my case. And as I was saying before, it has no correlation to what's in donors. Okay. So when I move a record from prospect to donors, they, uh, the record will be assigned a new donor number and they will lose the prospect number. The field up the top right hand corner for uh, user number in the system um, and is one of the fields of course you can rename, but in the case of say a hospital or uh, institution like that, where you're getting names and addresses and contact details for people that have you know, given consent that they can be contacted, etc., and you want to have an additional ID, then this is where the patient ID number could go. If we were doing that, or if you were doing that, normally you would have a special import program written that would use that number as the first place to check for a duplicate, rather than doing, you know, like we do with their general import, which I'll run through shortly, uh, where we import and we're primarily checking for similar name, postcode, and, and email address. So it's not checking that user number field. It doesn't have that sort of smarts built into it um, because that does make it a little bit more complex. As we go through the records, you'll see the fields are very similar. So you've got you know, title, name, surname, postnominal, etc. So the core fields are the same as donors, and this is what allows us to transfer from donors um, from prospect to donors. Okay, so you've got the same sort of thing. If you've got the RAT tool, you can uh, look up addresses, etc. In order to get the DPID, the suburb, pre-sort, all of those fields. The layout from there is a little different because they've now got telephone work home, fax and mobile sort of in this block where over on this right hand side here on donors is normally where I would have all my buttons for the you know notes and pictures and pledges and, and all of those details which I don't have when I'm looking at the prospects. Okay. So the same sort of thing, I do have a mail code but I don't have the mail list. Okay. So normally I'm using the, the prospects to say look I'm putting these people in and I'm going to contact them for this purpose. So I'm primarily using the mail code when I'm doing that. When I transfer the record from uh, prospect to donors uh, in, in a number of different ways, um, I can do that. Then all of these details that are on the screen will transfer across because the fields are exactly the same. For the people that have got prospects currently, what we've sort of changed recently and, and Murray and I have sort of done a bit of work with the, the programmers is 
there was no mechanism previously for recording mail, like mail, you know, history or what people have been mailed or how many times they've been mailed. Down the bottom of the screen now, under the comments field, you'll see last mail. So there's last mail one, two, three, four, and the mail count. So Murray will run through um, that later, looking at how we can update those fields for Frostrec records. So that allows us to at least be able to keep tabs on people you know, and say, yes, this person's been mailed, you know, four times or six times, whatever it may be, um, because depending on what you're doing with the prospects, you might say, look, after I've mailed people a number of times, I want to either clear prospects out so I can basically wipe out the whole file and start again, or I can just ignore them. So when we do the selection based on the, pro the prospect records, we could use the acquisition date to say I'm looking for all records that were acquired between, you know, if I was doing a new import today, I'd say from today up to whenever I'm doing the output, or based on the actual prospect number. So you've got those same sort of options in donors, but not used primarily for that purpose, but certainly for um, the prospect records, they will be used that way. So if I've got a prospect record and I wanted to transfer them to donors, what I would have to do is be in donors first. So if we go into multi-find, so just donor entry, go into multi-find, and in this case, I've got a Smith there already. So if I do a search up the top here, so by default, it's searching donors because that's primarily where I am. But you can also see now I've got prospects showing. So if I've got this person here is in prospects and they're the record I wanna transfer across, I can just double click on the record and you get the message saying, do you want to transfer them to donors? Suggest so yes. Okay, so this record's now lost the number they had as a prospect and they've now gained a donor number. So it's now just continuing the sequence of numbers as it would be normally. So from now, I can change anything about the record and then just save it again. Okay, if I page up, so I can sit now see that the record is transferred and everything's there. The other way to transfer a prospect is if we do a mail out and we have correspondence where we've put the prospect number on the return slips, etc. cetera, um, you can then uh, use on the keyboard templates that everybody's got, if you have one handy, you can look at those and you'll see the F9 key is transfer prospects. So if I push F9, it'll come up with this screen that's not very pretty, unfortunately, but um, we may get that worked on, but from there I can then type in the prospect number. So in this case, if I type in eight, okay, and it's come up with a name here, saying the the person, and is that the correct record? So if I say yes and enter, okay, so that record now has got the next donor number. So it's just continuing the sequence. So. A couple of ways, you know, quite easily you can transfer people from the prospect file to the donor file. If we were, you know, doing something more um, along the lines of doing a bulk, there is a mechanism for doing a bulk transfer of, of people from prospects to donors or donors to prospect even. Not very often would we, you know, um, move donors to prospects because any of the information that we might have had attach to the record, you know, any notes and things like that will get lost because they will lose that donor number and they will just become the next prospect in the sequence. But normally multi-find is, is the best way to do that. So when you search for the records in here, if I put nothing in at all and just search, now it's showing me that there's archives, prospects, address records. So prospects, then I can see the list of all of the prospects that I've got. And again, I can just double click and I'll say, do you want to you know, transfer that record across to the donor file? So it's a pretty easy mechanism as we go through. Okay. To add people into the prospects, the other donors. Okay. The same as we do with donors, we can just enter and then start typing in the information. So you can, you can add them manually. The more Traditional method though would be looking at importing because it's not often that I'm going to get you know a one-off you know like a prospect by themselves sort of sitting there. I'd, I'd normally have a file that I've you know obtained from somewhere or somebody sent me a file of records that 
we might say, look, I don't want to, you know, just put these records straight into my donor file. I have got the option of putting them into prospects. So if we were to go modify history archive and use the general import program, which lots of people now you know, are using for uh, importing um, records for donors. When we go in there, my first option is add records, but because I've got the prospect module, I can then type P in there to say, I wanna put these records into the prospect system. Okay, so from there, it's the same as doing it for donors, where we can go through and say, yes, I'm looking for, yes, the acquisitions date today, whatever the source code may be. And from there, I can go through and find my text file. Okay, and in this case, I've got it, I'm just using my training system. So I've got this file here for new prospects. So if I choose that, the same mechanism exists. I can do a trial run. In this case, I'll say no. And I've then got the option to do the duplicate checking by email or similar name and postcode as I was mentioning before. Because see, this has no smart thing to say, do you want to deduplicate based on the user number? So that's where normally if you you know were utilizing that and wanted to use that field as a unique identifier that cross you know um you could cross relate to a, a never data file like a, a patient file or anything else really then you would need a, a dedicated import program to be able to duplicate check based on that number first and then go into the normal name or email sort of duplicate checking as we go through continue okay so the same like donors if I've called the field or the field in my text file is the same as the data file it will match up straight away so where I might have last name if that doesn't match it's just a matter of matching up the field so okay, last name will go into surname in this case they've just got a field called address so if I said well for most things that will go into street one okay then I've got suburb state P code so it's really just a matter of marrying up the fields. If you're not quite sure, look at the actual file itself and you know, get an idea of what field or what sort of data is in that field so you can match them up with this case. But normally you'll find that if you call the field in your text file or your Excel file when you're starting this, um, the same name as Don Men, you won't need to go through this because they will match up straight away. Okay, so where I've got this alt ID, this is where I could then say, I want to read that field into the user number field, which is that one up the top right hand corner. Okay, so I've got email, phone, home, phone, work. Once I've matched those fields up, yes to begin. Okay, so it will go through and say, okay, I've got duplicate checking, it's now happening. Okay, so I've now got my log at the end saying records read eight, Records added, uh, records read, sorry, nine, records added at eight because one of them I'd selected as a duplicate person. Okay. So I'll then get the the log file as I would do normally. And if I now go back and have a look at my prospects. Okay. So I've now got these records here that I've just imported. So you can see the acquisition date is today last changed by myself today because I've imported them. So exactly the same as you would do for donors, but in this case, I'm not you know, putting potentially thousands of records into my donor file that at this point aren't active in any way. So we can then go through and say, okay, this is what we want to do uh, with this. It just gives you a, a lot of flexibility to you know, do things with the records that you can't do otherwise. Cut down from donors, you know, so it's, People will sometimes um, inquire from Murray and myself whether you know we can do certain things in prospects that we can do in donors. But as you can see from the screen, there, there's no ability to do notes or or any of that ever information. It is really just the contact details, it's names, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, stuff like that. So I can put those records into this file here, and then I can you know move them if I need to. I can mail them. I can do all of those sort of things as we go through. The only addition, as I mentioned before, would be 
there's these last mile codes down the bottom here. You know, so for people that have got the prospects now, you won't have that. You'll, you'll know that your last field was comments. The fields for these um, did exist in the data file. They were just something that hadn't been used in the past. So uh, it wasn't a big change to actually you know, get them activated. Um, but I think it's going to be something that's very useful for people that are using the prospect modules uh, currently or people who might want to you know, buy that module and utilize you know, the functionality that you can get from it. Okay. So if you were importing like I've done with just a general import, sorry, it will, it will go through. And you can see I've got numbers up the top right hand corner here. So that's come across. But if I do that import, I haven't got the option using the general import program to actually utilize this field here and say, I want to make sure that, you know, if it checks that number to say that the person is, is the same. What that really circumvents is, is if we can match the number, the same sort of mechanism like we do with, you know, Everyday Hero, My Cause, Go Fundraise, those sort of online uh, mechanisms where people have got an alternate ID, it just means if you match by that number, it should be unique to that person and you can then skip all the future you know, duplicate checking. So if you've got quite a big file to read in, you'll know that sometimes duplicate checking can be a, a laborious process because it's going to come up with lots of records saying, you know, this one here's got a similar name or this one here's got a similar name or similar email. So it can take a very long process. So that's one of the mechanisms for, you know, no, doing that so you can just have something that's unique. So unlike donors, again, this one doesn't have a drop down list on this field here. So there's no button over the side that you can click on the drop down, um, which you have got on donors, which is where the alternate ID um, codes or numbers or whatever it may be are stored in a file called the keys file. Yeah. So really very much a cut down of donors, but as far as your contact details go, all of the things that you've got, the main fields that you've got on a donor, you can also then have a prospect and utilize all of those fields as you go through. So something worth looking at for people that, you know, haven't got that already or, you know, think that, you know, the data file, the donor file is getting bigger and lots of people that are in the donor file have maybe never given a donation because they've been imported from different files over, you know, over time. And as such, your donor file becomes, you know, quite full of records that, that are there for just, you know, a mailing list or something like that, where you don't have all of the details. Ideally, for donors, are records that we do want to have some activity on, you know, so we do want to have donations, they're involved in events, they're, they're sort of, you know, mixed up in the system a little bit different than, than they are in this case here. So, like an Excel file in a way. But you're really just saying, look, it's now part of your data file. So anytime we do a search in MultiFind, we can find the people in Prospects. Yeah, so just like the one we're looking at then in the Prospect file, there is only one person whose surname starts with street in this case. So it's found the only link or the only um, match in the prospect file, and again, I can just double click, transfer them. It's, a, it's really as easy as that, okay? So I'll hand over to Murray now, who'll show you the sort of difference between the um, selections, you know, that people have done, you know, quite often for donors. Um, the process for prospects is, <laughs> is a very much simpler process. Okay, over to you, Murray. Hi, everybody. Uh, just waiting to be able to show my screen. Okay. So, as uh, Gary mentioned, um, you can do imports using the general import program, but if you have a specific need for something slightly different, um, then you can have specific programs written for you. One of the advantages of that, and I've seen this in a couple of places, especially hospitals, as Gary mentioned, you can do that duplicate checking on, say, the, the um, 
the number, the user number up in the top corner, which would probably be a patient number. But I've seen places where they will actually say, well, okay, this person has been in the hospital. They were imported maybe a year or two ago. We've done a mail out to them. They haven't donated, so they still are sitting in the prospect file. But then they've come into the hospital again, and when it's downloaded, that program has recognized that they're already on the system, but it's actually flagged them in some way so that you can actually then um, do a special mail out to those people knowing that they've already been in before and you have tried to contact them um, with no response. So you can actually um, address your letter to them more specifically as a repeat person. So what I'm going to be covering today is basically the donor appeal side of things, but for prospects. Now, what I've done is I've actually added prospects down here. Um, if you're not aware, these two buttons here have dual purposes. If I right click on either of those, it goes back to their original, which is volunteers and raffles. But most people don't have either volunteers or raffles. So by right clicking on those, we can actually set those to two different options, which can be either other programs or other menus. I've done it. Um, for prospects down in the bottom one and I'll show you how to do that because if you don't have that set up you'll need to go in the way that Gary mentioned. So by going into main menu and then into whatever your system name is, in mine I'm calling it the webinar system, and then fundraising, down here we've got prospects. Now Gary clicked on that and that takes us into where we were before but if we go back to fundraising, if I right click on that, select properties, I can use either of these two buttons here to set prospects or the prospect menu as one of those two buttons. I've already set it at the bo as the bottom one, but I'll go through it again. It's going to be called prospects. I click on save and OK. And from there, now I can go to the prospect menu very quickly by clicking on prospects. So Gary's already talked about looking at the the prospect record and as he mentioned it's a cut down version we don't have any information in any other files all of all the information that we know about a prospect is in the prospect record itself so when we go to create selection files prior to doing some sort of mail out rather than having 100 or 200 questions about all the possible options that you have for selections all we can do is select them based on information in that prospect record so I'm going to go to the Prospect Appeals menu, and we've got pretty much the same options that you would normally have on the Donor Appeals menu, except this is now relating to um, prospects as opposed to donors. When you're creating a donor selection file, what you're effectively doing is pulling up a list of donor numbers of people that you want to do something with. So that could be doing a mail out to them, it could be archiving them in bulk or making some sort of bulk change. The same thing applies here as well, but when we're dealing with prospects, then we're creating a list of prospect numbers that we want to do something with. Now, the sorts of things that we can do with prospects is much more limited than with um, donors. If you're aware, when you create a donor selection file, the file that name that you give it will end in a .apl, short for appeal. The prospect selection file that we're going to be looking at now is going to end in .ppl. So let's go through this. Now, I'm going to assume that you have some sort of knowledge of doing a donor selection file, and hopefully you all do. On the donor selection program, you have probably about seven or eight different tabs where you can select um, donors based on all sorts of things. And we've tried to group those into logical um, groups and put them under the panel. Here, you'll notice that there are no tabs whatsoever. All of the questions are on the screen. Okay, so what do we want to call our selection file? I'll just call it test. That's easy enough. Okay, now if you've just imported a whole lot of prospects from some sort of list, presumably you'll have a, a source code to indicate where those donors came from. And that would probably be the name of the list. You know, perhaps it's from your golf day in 2017, people signed in and you got lists of people from there. 
Um, so you might create a source code to say golf 17 or something like that. So when you're doing a, a mail app, quite often you will want to use the source code. And if we were to say yes to that, I can press enter. And just like with on a donor program, doing the selection, you have a list of up to 40 different um, source codes that you can select. Um, I think I've only got about one that's actually being used, but I still get the whole list. Um, I think the one I've just recently used was Tour, new hospital tour. I could add others there and they would also be selected, but I don't think that's going to make much difference. I also have the option of excluding by the prospect source, exactly the opposite of selecting. I can look at their prospect category. Are they an individual? Are they a corporation, club, society, that sort of thing? The same thing that we know as donor type on the donor screen. Each prospect can have up to eight extra codes. So again, we can do selection by that. And in most of these things, if I say yes and press enter, I'm going to get a pop-up where you have the option of up to 40 different codes. And so long as, in this case, at least one of the extra codes on the prospect records matches whatever I specify here, then they, they will match. And so long as a record, a prospect record, matches all the questions or criteria that I set, they will then end up in my uh, prospect selection file. Anybody that fails any of these tests along the way, they will not be included. So we can exclude by extra codes, sport, Corporate, corporate status, user code three. These are just basically user code, user code two and user code three um, that have been renamed in the first two cases. We can select by the auxiliary code. Um, by default, like with donors, it, it will automatically exclude donors with a mail code of no mail. However, if you are wanting to create a selection file of maybe all of your prospects so that you could just delete them, you would probably want to say no to that. We can select by mail code or exclude by mail code. We can look at the postcode or bulk mail code ranges or, and select or exclude by those if we wanted to target a specific area. We can do prospect number range. So if we knew that a particular range of um, prospects had just been imported, we might want to use just the prospect number. We can do sort key if we're doing something alphabetical. Our acquisition date, again, like Gary mentioned, when you do an import, you would typically have the one acquisition date, so you could then use that to determine which group of people that you actually wanted. Okay, do we want people with email addresses? So if we only wanted those that had an email address, we could go M for must be. If we wanted to exclude those so that we only mail to those without it, we can say E for exclude. And if we don't care one way or another, we simply leave it blank. The same thing if you're looking for prospects with overseas addresses, we could exclude them or just target them separately. And this is something new that most uh, of your clients won't actually have at the moment, but will come out in the next update. As Gary mentioned, we've recently added the last four campaigns that they've been mailed and the total number of mails. So if I hit yes and press enter, I get a pop-up. So I can select or exclude by the last four campaigns mailed, or I can look at a or, and I can also look at the number of mails that they've received. So if you've just done a mail out to some people, you know, you've mailed some people two or three times and they still haven't responded, which means that they're still in the, in the prospect file, you might say, look, we've mailed them two or three times, they haven't responded, it's probably just not worth our while doing that. And you might want to select those people and just delete them off the, off the prospect file. Or you might say, look, I only want to mail to those people I've already mailed just the once. That's up to you. Okay, I can select the order. Yes to begin. And that will quickly go through. And in this case, it's selected 244 out of 277 because I really didn't give it too much many criteria. And I think all of my prospect records have pretty much got the one um, source code apart from a few that didn't come through. When I scroll down, it tells me the source code that I picked and then it tells me I picked 244, 88% of the database. So that now exists as a file in my DM work directory. I can just close that down. And if I wanted to look at those, the simple way is 
open file. I can look for prospect selection files, this one here. And there's my test at the top, created today. And if I go into that, again, here you see that's all it is. It is just a list of prospect numbers. There are no names, addresses, or phone numbers, or anything at all like that. But that's exactly the same in donors, except they're donor numbers instead of prospect numbers. Now, normally, the prospect selection file by itself is not particularly useful until you actually do something with it. And typically, one of those things that you want to do is to create a merged data file so that you could do a mail out, or maybe you just put them into a spreadsheet so you can do some sort of list or something along those lines. So if we go into here, again, this is very similar to what we have on the donor appeals menu, except again, there are limited options here. So I'm going to type in the name of my selection file, press enter. I pressed enter a second time to let it count them, and it's come up with the 244, which I know is the correct number. There's no options there for alternate salutations or doing um, counts and dollar values of, my, of donations within a period because they don't have any of that stuff. So I'm going to do this with separate fields. The other alternative is formatted names where it produces address one through to address eight based on whatever information is available on the prospect screen. So separate fields for that. I don't want to do a check digit. Um, I'm not using barcoding, so I'm going to say no to that. The default name in this case is pappeal.txt, um, whereas on the normal donor appeals, it would be appeal.txt. Now, most of the time, you probably want to change that to the same name as the file up the top. Um, in this case, I'm not actually going to do that. And the reason is that I've got a document set up down here, which is automatically going to pick up this pappeal.txt. So by saying yes here and leaving this as it is, then this merge will make life a lot easier. If I were to change the name here, I would simply need to um, open my Word document either automatically here or manually, and then I would need to associate that document with whatever file name I created here. In hindsight, I'm going to change that. So I'll actually call it test.txt, but I'll still get it to open up that sample letter that I've got. And when I'm on the next screen, you can see a very small number of fields down to this line of dashes. These are the defaults because I chose to do the separate fields. Anything after this line of dashes has been added, and I've added these things here myself. So if I wanted to, say, vary the letter a little bit, depending on whether they were male, female, or both, I would need to output a field called sex. So to do that, I go down to the file, and I choose prospect, which is the only option. And then in field, from the drop-down list, I can choose sex, and I can choose any other field that I want to output. Um, so if there was something like, let's say, male frequency, I can add that. Then I go OK. When I scroll down, we can see that I've got sex and I've got male frequency, which is the male code. They will remain there until I delete them. So they will continue to come out from now on until someone says, no, nah, let's get rid of those. Having done that, I can click on Continue. If the list that you've got here is everything you need, then you would just simply click on Continue. If there's extra fields in here that you don't want, leave them in there because somebody else probably will want them. And if you put them into a spreadsheet, you can very simply delete those columns. OK, so I click on Continue. It goes away. It creates a file called test.txt in this situation. I told it to pick up the um, to open up that document. Now, in this case, you can see it wants to pick up the data from pappeal.txt. So, if I'd left the file name as pappeal.txt, I could say yes here, and it would then be able to automatically just do the merge. Well, I could just do the merge straight away. However, because I did change the name, and that would probably be the normal circumstance, I'm going to say no to that. And now what I need to do is I need to associate this template or this master document with the actual um, data file that I created. So I go to mailings, select recipients. I'm going to use an existing list. And then I need to navigate to the folder where my file is. Now, mine's actually called webinar DM work. Yours would typically be just DM work. OK. 
and there it is up the top there test.txt and so there's my document now if I simply go to preview results I can see what it's going to look like so the first one is Mr Anonymous you'll see over here I've tucked away the prospect number with a P in front just so I know that that's a prospect so if I'm doing a mail out to my donors as well you might just have a donor number there so the P says hey this came from a prospect and like Gary showed you you could then simply do a transfer using F9 into the prospect system when those people make a donation so it's fairly straightforward these are the various merge fields there you can see again here I've got title first name surname oh well, post noms in the wrong spot so I should probably move that otherwise that would go in the funny place um, everything else there is just like a standard merge and if I want to actually produce the results I simply go to finish and merge at individual do them all and that should create for me a document with 244 um, sections in it so as you can see there's a lot there um, and that would then get sent off to the mail house. Well, that's, that would get printed, I guess, in house. Or if you wanted to do it um, in to a mail house, they typically like it in an Excel file. So we simply go into Excel. I'll just maximize that. We go File, Open, Browse. Again, we navigate to the DM Work directory. And by default, it's going to look at Excel files, so I'll just change that to text files. And again, there's text. It, oh, okay. I need to close down my Word document. So I'll just close both of those. Okay, so I'll do it as read only anyway, but that'll be fine. Brings up the text import wizard. I'm sure you've probably seen this before. Generally speaking, you can go finish, but if there's any field in particular that you want to actually handle specially maybe phone numbers if there's leading zeros you would actually have to go through each step next next and then where there was phone numbers uh, okay so it doesn't look like there's a lot of phone information in there but you might pick phone and say I want you to import that as text then we go finish there's our spreadsheet you can then save that away as an Excel file and send that to your mailing house okay so Assuming that we have done that um, as a, a mailer, I don't want to save any of that. No. Okay, so I'm now back in Donman. So assuming that I've sent that to the mail house, one of the things that we now have introduced again very recently is this update prospect mail history. Again, it's a similar sort of thing to what you would find in the donor appeals menu, but it works for the prospects and it uses those four extra fields at the bottom of the screen. The prospect record plus the the count every time we do anything in bulk it always asks us if we've got a backup if we say no it throws us back to the file uh, back to the menu what's the selection file well I just call it test and it's counted 244 that's good if I'm doing this for a campaign I'll do CACQ it's probably going to give me a warning that I've already done it no okay um, that's my other system um, let me just do general okay now do we want to update the postcode mail response database that is basically a database that keeps track of how many items of mail go to each postcode for this particular campaign um, and then later on if any of these people actually give you'll be able to keep track of how many gave and how much money came from each of the different postcodes do we want to update the mail history summary yes we do that's what's at the bottom of the screen so that will then put general as being the last campaign that they were mailed it'll also increment the total number of mails that they were mailed do we want to change the last change date to today not really update the campaign number mailed so if my campaign hasn't included these people in the number mailed, then I would say yes and it will increment that by 244 puts my initials in yes to begin and that's now done okay so all fairly straightforward nothing particularly special there and if I were to go back to my screen and have a look at some of these people um, oh, these let me go to the last ones so here is somebody 
that was in the list, and you can see it's now put last mail of general. I pretended that I mailed for the tour as well, and the mail count is two. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Like again in Prospect Appears, you've got things like type your own selection file. So if you wanted to create a selection file of specific uh, prospects, I can create a file name. I'm just going to overwrite that existing one, and I can come up with a prospect number. Or I can just page down and bring up number one, maybe number four. 15, etc. I can do other finds as well, but if I escape out, that selection file has got the three donors of three prospects in there. Um, everything else in here, things like using the lookup file, it's all exactly the same sort of thing that you can do with donors, except it's now in prospects. Now, the last couple of things I'm going to have a look at are in the bulk utility menu. So, to get there, I need to go from the start menu to main menu into your system, fundraising, modify history archive, and we type in the password for that, and hopefully you all know what that password is, and then the bulk utility programs. Okay, that's got a slightly different password. Okay, so as Gary mentioned, we've got this bulk donors to prospect, and bulk prospect to donors. So essentially with these bulk donors to prospect, I would need a donor selection file, and I would give it the name in here, and basically it then just transfers all of those people from donors to prospect. But again, like Gary said, that's not something you should do lightly, because any information that's been stored against the donor record effectively now gets lost, because the donor record disappears, it creates a new prospect record, but any associated information with that prospect is effectively lost. We have the option of going the other way. So if there was a group of donors that you wanted to move, sorry, a group of prospects that you wanted to move, we could do that using the bulk prospect to donors. And again, in here we would have a prospect selection file, maybe like the MN1 that I created. And I could move them across. What source code do you want them to have? Well, I'll give them tour. Yes to that. And print to printer and it's now moved those across to the donor file. If I have a quick look at this, okay, this is what would have been sent to your printer. So it's just telling you these are the new donor numbers that have been assigned to these three original prospect numbers. Okay, so I'll just get out of this. Well, I'll go back to domain. And the last thing is one that you probably will use from time to time, and that's the bulk delete prospects. So again, this uses a prospect selection file. So if you've perhaps done a selection file of people where you've mailed two or three times, they obviously haven't responded because they're still in the prospect file. So you could then give them the names here um, and then basically just run through that and it will then remove those from your prospect file. If you wanted to clear the prospect file completely, you would do a selection file of everybody, remembering that you needed to not exclude the no mail people. So once you've done that, then all of your prospects would be gone, and the next time you did an import of prospects, it would start with prospect number one again. So those prospect numbers, like Gary said, they are completely independent of the donor numbers, but then when you wipe them out, then it will start again at number one. So sometimes you might have to be a little bit careful that a letter that gone out maybe a couple of months ago with prospect numbers on it, and then you clear them and import new ones, it might confuse between the two numbers being the old prospect number and the new ones. In that case, just simply import them before you delete the old ones, and then of course the new ones get higher numbers again. So I'm going to actually leave it at that point and hand back to Marla for any questions that may have arisen.